Greetings everyone and welcome to another WIS Technology tutorial. Um, I saw a question recently regarding is it possible to track the duration of time between a check-in and a check-out? Now this could be for students or for any number of items. I decided to do this using fruit. So the concept being is that um, somebody would come in, they would check in, and then before they leave, they check out, and then a Google Sheet automatically tracks the amount of time that has passed between those check-ins. So here's how it works. A form is filled in. In this case, apples uh, could check in and apples could check out. And that information is then deposited into a form response sheet. Uh, I renamed the form response sheet into the master sheet. Um, so I have two columns, and you can see apples, oranges, apples, oranges, bananas, bananas. So apples checked in at uh, 3.57 and checked out at 4 p.m. Um, now I needed to work with this information. So the first thing I did was I created a tab for check-ins. Okay, So this consists of a now function in cell A1, which will be used as a reference cell for this query, right? Because that we're gonna reuse this response sheet. So what happens is on May 3rd, none of this information will be the same, the, will be the same right? So I could actually type in 532016. And if I do that, all of this stuff, um, it's a little sluggish, but all of that's gonna go away. See, it's not, or we're going to get an error eventually. It's still working uh, because of the array formulas. But you can see this goes away. Um, so it's dependent upon the date. That means I can reuse this every day. And as long as I, I download the data from each sheet, I can have a record of the check-ins and check-outs. So let me go ahead and put back our now function. We'll let that reload. Also notice that in my query, I put the uh, timestamp to the right of uh, the fruit. All right, so when it came in, in the master, it looks like this. Timestamp on the left, fruit on the right. Well, I'm actually beginning using the, the, the fruit in a lookup. Um, so I really needed the timestamp to be on the other side. So hence, in my query, I did, I selected B before A. So this is giving me the, the check-in list. And I've sorted it where it is listing them in order from oldest to, from oldest to most recent. Now, logic would have it that if I recreate this list in the opposite direction, I will have the checkout time. Because when I use the VLOOKUP function, it's looking down the row like this. So it's gonna pick the first apples it sees. So that's why this one is essentially the check in function because as VLOOKUP is looking down the column and it's looking for apples, this is the first apples it's gonna find and it's gonna give me this time. So if I reverse this order in the OUT function, which is what I've done here. The most recent is at the top. So when the VLOOKUP looks for apples here, it's going to get this time, right? 4 p.m. So that's what this query sort is doing. So I've set it up to sort in the other direction. And then the, to finish off the job, I have this daily report. So this would just be a student list of all the students, or in this case, all of my fruit. Um, and then their sign out times. And this is again, the VLOOKUP, which I was just describing. So it's looking down the out tab for the first, uh, the, the first uh, site of the apples, um, the apples here, and then the check-in time, of course, 
is the first time it sees apples in the check-in tab. And then it's referencing the cell right next to it with the an index of two. So what's happening here is a simple subtraction. I'm taking the sign out time minus the sign in time, and that's what I get. So, um, and here's the, the actual formula for the subtraction I did in column D. So it's basically saying if A2 to A is blank, then leave this blank as well. That's why you're seeing zeros here because there's there's text over here. If I delete watermelon, um, it's also gonna go, this will disappear as well. So this way we don't have unnecessary data in our sheet. So there it goes. So but I'm gonna bring back watermelon because we're about to check him in. I'll bring back watermelon and I should see zeros here in a minute. I'm still not certain why it's sluggish like this. Um, it's accurate, but for some reason it's, it's a little slow. So if I go to my spreadsheet and we'll start with grapes, okay? So I'm gonna actually pull this out into a different, and we're gonna go split screen. I know there's a Chrome extension for this, but that's all right. Go like this. And here we go. So I'm going to add grapes and I'm going to submit. And now let's just wait for a little bit, right? So grapes is over here. It's now in the masters. And I guess while Grapes is signing in, I'm going to go check in uh, Watermelon. Great. And now at least uh, a minute has passed here for Grapes. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to sign Grapes out. And I'm also going to sign watermelon out. Now these times aren't gonna be that interesting because I'm signing in and signing out so close together. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at our data now that uh, once this is done doing its processing, let's see what we have. So as you can see, it's still calculating it did put 43 seconds in between the grapes check-in and check-out, and it also put 34 seconds in between the watermelons check-in and check-out. So there you have it. So again, the idea is comparing two timestamps to calculate the duration uh, based on a check-in and a check-out time. Hope you like the tutorial. Thanks for watching. Bye.